This episode is called The Lord of the Tides, and by the end of it, the tides had certainly turned. Welcome back to Fog Entertainment, it's House of the Dragon. We're not far from the end of season one, I think, as we're getting to the business end. Business is picking up. Business is picking up. Six year time skip, though, is not good for King Viserys. He didn't look great the last time we seen him. Six years further on, he looks even worse. And by the end of this episode, King Viserys may finally breathe his final last breath. And it won't be a fiery dragon breath, it'll be a, a death breath, I guess. Probably because... a dire need of Listerine, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I mean, as for Viserys, right? I mean, it's kind of like a memorial, a memorial tomb this episode for us. Obviously, in the episode, he dies right at the end. Spoiler alert. But it's like, this guy looked fucked from the get-go. I'm, I'm shocked he lasted this long. Which is incredible, by the way. It was. So, uh, we start at the high tide. Six years have passed since the funeral of Lena Falerian. Corlys is believed to be dead. He has been fighting on the stepstones for that amount of time. And he was wounded, apparently. He fell off his boat, never to be seen again. Yeah. He could be alive, he might not be alive. But he is presumed dead, and that means they need to crown whatever his title was, the Driftmark. They need to install someone. The new leader of the Driftmark. Yeah, the new leader in the Driftmark. Now, obviously, Raniera believes that her kids should be in that role because she was married to him, she's got the kids, but as we all know... Her kids are bastards. They're not really Falerians. And then we see Sir Faymond Falerian come in. A new character, I believe, introduced for this episode. He claims that he should be titled with Driftmark because he is Corley's brother. He has got true Falerian blood in him and that he plans to contest this. He plans to try and change King Viserys' mind. So... They travel to Dragonstone, but they don't have to change King Viserys' mind because he's not sitting in the chair. In fact, he's been laying in bed for a very long time at this point. Yeah, he's been lying in bed, absolutely bedridden. I believe Corley's his brother. Was, we've seen him previously, but again, he is the rightful heir, man. Look at him. Look at him, for God's sake. He looks like Corley's. The, the Just bastards, look at him. The bastards are, are, are whiter than milk. No, and you've got this whole episode just centered around right, who's going to get it. Viserys even gets out of his fucking bed just to declare that you know what it should actually go to my daughters, my grandchildren. Yeah, so we've got the hand of the king. He he is basically doing all the duties. The queen as well. They are pretty much at this point speaking for the king. Sir Feyman Falerian believes that he is going to probably be awarded at Driftmark because. Of the fact that the Queen and Rhaenyra don't really get along. He puts his point across that he has fought with his brother. He has defended Driftmark since he was since he was young. And that he is the rightful heir since he is true Valerian blood. And he's making a good case to Otto Hightower. But he needs to make it again. Because in comes King Viserys. Earlier, Rhaenyra and Damon arrived and they showed King Viserys their kids. So that means he's now a grandfather. It's a bit fucking weird looking at your daughter and your brother's child. Because on one hand, it makes you an uncle. But on the other hand, it makes you a grandfather. Like, what title is King Viserys going by? I, I, I just find all this weird. I, not really fucking weird. I get it. It's a, it's a Game of Thrones way, so to speak, right? But Viserys has beefed with Damon this entire season, this show. And then it's like, here he is, like, here, look, look at me and your daughter created big man. I'm the guy. I'm only four years younger than you, even though I look about 40 years younger than you. I don't know. Viserys, his eyes hanging out. His arse is hanging out. <laughs> Everything's hanging out. Yeah, it's almost the fact that he married his daughter and had a kid that kind of squashed the internal beef. But Viserys is happy that Damon is back. He won't. He, oh, he, he exiled him a long time ago and he's tried to bring him back and now Damon is back but they want they want Driftmark and it doesn't look like they're going to get it because Otto Hightower's listening to Sir Feyman but then King Viserys walks in on his own and this was a, a really good scene you, you feel sorry for him he's I mean not crawling but he may as well be on the floor crawling as he slowly makes his way 
um, down the hall into the crown's chair and he doesn't want any help for any of his guards. He wants to do it himself. He's making the ascend up the up the steps and then his crown falls off. He bends down. He tries to get the crown. Someone comes to help him. Again, he tells his guard, I don't need help, but it's not his guard. It's Damon, his brother. And Damon then helps him, puts the crown back on top of his head and helps King Viserys rest onto the chair where King Viserys hears out both Faemond, hears out his daughter, and he decides that he's going to give the drift mark to Rhaenyra's eldest kid. And it's because Corley's wife also wanted this. She said this was Corley's wish, even though... I mean, technically, I guess it was, because Corley's did say that nobody remembers blood, they remember names. So therefore, he's happy enough for the kids to to inherit Driftmark, even though it's not really his blood, but obviously this doesn't please Sir Feyman Valerian, he's upset about this, rightfully so. Uh, he looks at them, he goes, don't you tell me what Valerian blood is, I could cut my arm and you still wouldn't recognise this blood. And then he says, those are no Valerians, those kids are bastards! And this didn't go very well. Now Damon did warn him not to say it, uh, King Viserys tried to get up, took out his blade, said, I'm going to cut your tongue out for that. But before he could get to his tongue, Damon comes up from behind him, swipes his head off, cuts his head off in half, and Damon then coolly says he can keep his tongue. I thought it was a very good scene. I liked his, like, they are bastards. I liked that last stand. But what was Viserys realistically going to do? But it's like Damon saying, oh, watch what you're saying, big man. It's like, not the reality of the show is, see Rhaenyra? She's a fucking, she's a whore. She is. She's a whore. She's a sketch. No, she literally fucking is. Damon is just a weird ass character, doesn't care. But you try to tell me an honourable man like Ned Stark would be with Rhaenyra? Not a fucking hope in hell. No, no, I mean, she's literally got kids to help me. How many different people at this stage? Yeah, and I, I tell you Well, what, just then, the two. You but, say, but the two that she's got them with... The, the one that she's supposed to have with, she didn't have any with. Yeah, so. and what I would say is, I think there's going to be a plot twist. I think Sir Christian... What's his name? Sir Christian Bell? Christian Cole. Sir Christian Cole. I think the oldest son might be his. Now, I don't know that for sure, but the point is, she slept her in. She's firing out kids, like Viserys is fucking, you know, firing out pitch authority. Unlimited. But again, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, how can anyone seriously, like, back... Her kids leading Driftmark. It should be someone that's black. I don't know if the show's trying to portray like the um, the what do you call these guys? Yeah, because she was with Christian Cole, and then she got married to Corley's son, and then she just went straight to that strong guy. So I mean, she's been passed around. And she was like sleeping with da like Damon got up against the wall, and she was like 14, 15. Was but see, I, I think this is the show just being woke, and they're trying they're trying to view Raniera as like a empowered woman that, yep. that sleeps with who she wants whereas if this happened in Game of Thrones she would be labelled a whore yeah but yeah it's like earlier this season they were trying to be like here yeah, why can't I do what you used to you sleep around but we're men you know <laughs> yeah no, it, it just works when, you, when you've got King Robert fucking telling all these war stories and all the women that he slept with I mean it just works with Raniera bragging about it it's not the same thing you know what I mean no it's not but yeah, I mean, I, I liked this scene. It was still, it was quite dragged out in the sense, but again, it's just, it is, it is very woke. And are they trying to go down the route here that the, the, net, what you, the Targaryens look a bit racist? But they're not really, they don't really talk about race. It's, I, I think they've been shafted out of Mark. Like, that's my personal opinion. The Falerians, I, I, I the believe entire, it. The, the entire family has been screwed in every every step. And, and, and should Damon not. Should he not be getting, like, repercussions here for just killing Sir Feynman? I know, he just kills this guy and that's it. It's supposed to be, like, a high-ranking guy. Doesn't make much sense to me. Nope, nothing gets done, and that, I mean, that's pretty is much Corley, it. Is Corley, if I'm assuming Corley's alive, is he not going to try and offend his brother? His son's also alive, no one knows that. Just, like, what, their whole... Their whole Corley's wife just stood there, that's her brother-in-law. I know. And I get it, right, maybe you don't like your in-laws, but... You know, it's still... Fucking Tywin Lannister doesn't like his son, but he, he fucking wouldn't let anybody do anything to a Lannister. No, that's for sure. There would be repercussions if somebody did something to a Lannister. 
but, but not in this show. Valerians just get jobbed out every single episode, and you know, I don't know. It's <laughs> there's no there's no payback or anything like that. Uh, we then get the dinner scene. Uh, I thought the dinner scene was pretty good. Basically, all the families were there. The Valerians were there. The Targaryens were there. Um, so the High Towers were there. Pretty much everyone was there. All the kids were there, and they. I, I mean, I guess, for the most part, they just got along for King Viserys' yes, sake. Yes, Viserys cut a, bit, a decent promo. His last promo, to be fair. Uh, pretty much Basically saying, saying, like, this is the last time I'm going to be with my family. I want to enjoy it. So let me enjoy it. Let me enjoy it, big man. And then he gets carted off. And then once he gets carted off, that is pretty much game over for everybody. This is when everyone can fight. You've got the Strongs getting bullied, kind of, by the... When Targaryen children. The Targaryen children. The guy with one eye is like, oh, I love my cousins. My, 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 what, not my cousins. What, what are they to him? Nef nieces, Nef nephews. nephews. No, it's a fucking shit show, by the way. Like, you've got nieces, nephews, uncles, and it's like, but they're all marrying each other. Yeah, uh, then he's like, I, I see you turned it to be big, strong boys. At first, I never got it. But then I realised later on that it was obviously a, a dig at the fact that they are strong boys, literally, because they are bastards and they are their father is strong and not Valerian. So we have that, pretty much. The fight gets broken up. They tease a fight between Damon and Aemond. I mean, I think that would... I don't know. I think Aemon seems like a good fighter from what we've seen. He's been getting trained by Christian Cole... Uh, it's, it's a lot more, if someone's going to fight on those two sides, it's more believable that Eamon fights Damon because we all know that Eamon would fucking destroy both of um, Rhaenyra's two kids. I mean, he destroyed them four on one when he was younger. Yeah, no, the, the one-eyed man, Eamon, he is, he has a look about him. He looks like he could be king. And he's the second oldest. His older brother looks like a tool, and it's the same for the strong. He's the second oldest. He's he's the he's the younger one, the brother, but he looks about ten years older than his yeah. older brother, which is just kind of weird. Uh, yeah, and then we see King Viserys. He's laying in his bed, and he tells Alicent before she leaves that night that he wants his oldest son to inherit the throne. That's his. That's his wish. She leaves happy, I guess, that he's changed his mind. But, I don't know, she should have got it in writing because she leaves and then he passes away. His final breaths. The last words that he spoke was him wanting his son to inherit the throne. Did he mean it? Did he know what he was saying? Was he on milk of the poppy? Was that confusing him? Like painkillers would? I, I don't know. Was he hallucinating? We don't know, but... His dying wish essentially was he no longer wants Rhaenyra to inherit the throne and he wants it to be his son. So that will be interesting going forward. It will be interesting going forward. It's a good cliffhanger to end the episode on with him pretty much taking his final breath. Will he make it? Probably not. Um, but again, I think it was a good episode. There's woke tendencies in there, but I feel like we're building up towards something here as, if, as a, the season is coming towards a close. So I, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's 0.5 higher than we rated the last episode. Why? Well, I think there's been some good House of the Dragon episodes, but there's also the bad's pretty bad. No, I agree. Yeah. And so uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, you know, we buried the introduction of all these kids, but I feel like they're beginning to get the handle on it. I feel like I feel like it's beginning to make a bit more sense structure-wise. Yeah, you know what? Maybe with the time skips, they were always going to struggle. You know, you're you're basically trying to like skip about twenty years in the first season, and it almost kind of feels like some of the episodes feel like standalone episodes rather than you know continuous plot lines. It is hard to constantly skip multiple years every episode and and like continue like rivalries and stories and continue on from what ha like how can you really follow the last episode when you've had like a six year time skip yeah but can you name me a tv show yeah but you look at season this? you look at season one of game of thrones it's all pretty yeah there, there'll be like two week time skip and stuff but it's, the story's the same you know the characters are the same no absolutely but can you tell me another tv show that's done this in the first season i haven't it is risky but you know what i think they've done a decent job is there any it. reason to write it like this i mean how long has this show got? 
Is it going to go six seasons? Five? Eight? I don't think there's a need to... I mean, what I think... What maybe they'd... I think the story, though, just has all the kids older, and therefore, I do not believe going forward there'll be that many time skips. If any, I would yeah, probably I, I, I think going forward, we might see some time skips, but I think they're all going to be, like, short ones. I don't think we're going to see big, long ones, so it is what it is. Anyway, guys, that's it. 7 out of 10. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, let us know your thoughts down below, and peace.